hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel today guys i'll be checking out this interesting video and it's titled pdd every celebrity who warned people about sean combs you guys i'm super excited for this if you're here to subscribe to this channel please consider subscribing give this video a massive thumbs up comment share and all that good stuff and without much ado let's see what this video is all about hip-hop legend and media mogul sean diddy combs has seemingly remained untouchable for years and now the potential downfall of his empire and legacy has taken the hip-hop community by storm but was the writing always on the wall for diddy's alleged behavior Several celebrities have casually spoken out about his so-called parties, which lawsuits have alleged to be breeding grounds for sex assault and trafficking. Clues of what was allegedly behind the curtain began to emerge in November, when Diddy's former girlfriend Cassie Ventura sued the mogul in federal court on allegations of rape and a decade-long pattern of physical and sexual abuse. Wow. The singer, who was previously signed to Diddy's Bad Boy Records, claimed the rapper was controlling of every aspect of her life, mm -hmm. including where she lived, what she wore, and even her medical records. Wow. The suit alleged several instances of That's abuse committed by Diddy, including battery, rape, and forcing her to have sex with male sex workers. This is too much. The suit also claims Diddy used intimidation to control the R&B singer, including allegedly having someone blow up another rapper's car after Diddy learned he was interested in romantically pursuing Cassie when they were on a break period from their relationship. Hmm. The suit also alleges Diddy became violent, beating Cassie multiple times each year. In one instance, Diddy allegedly pushed her into a car, then proceeded to kick her in the face repeatedly. Wow. And another claim an intoxicated Diddy allegedly gave Cassie a black eye after she tried to leave a hotel room. The hotel security camera footage captured the incident, but Diddy allegedly bought it off for $50,000. Those weren't the only instances of alleged intimidation. The suit claims Diddy dangled Cassie's friend over a 17-story balcony and asked her to carry a gun in her purse. According to the suit, Cassie never went to the police and tried to leave their relationship multiple times, but was too afraid. The suit stated several Bad Boy Records employees turned a blind eye to the physical abuse and beatings Cassie allegedly endured, but no one spoke out in fear of their boss. Huh. According to the suit, Diddy supplied Cassie with different drugs, including ecstasy and ketamine. The suit claimed Cassie suffered from memory loss from the constant substance abuse during her relationship with Diddy. The documents also say her MRI results were sent directly to Diddy. The suit was ultimately settled a day after it was filed for an undisclosed amount. When Diddy's Los Angeles and Miami homes were raided by Homeland Security this week, the singer's attorney released a statement saying, quote, we will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those that have violated the law. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct. It wasn't the only instance a former girlfriend of Diddy's came forward alleging instances of abuse. Diddy's ex-girlfriend Gina Hunt said in a 2019 interview with controversial blogger Tasha Kay that Diddy allegedly stomped on her stomach and punched her in the head during one incident. Hun reportedly dated Diddy when he and Cassie were on and off. In the interview, she said she pleaded with Diddy to stop hitting her and said she couldn't breathe after he stomped on her stomach. Just like Cassie, she alleges Diddy was mentally, emotionally, and physically abusive during their wow. time together and claimed Diddy would compare she and Cassie, saying Hun is the bad one and Cassie is the good one. Hmm. Hun did not take legal action against Diddy. However, her interview resurfaced around the web when Cassie filed her lawsuit against Diddy. And after this week's raid, previous celebrities Celebrity interviews are also resurfacing and revealing more about Diddy's alleged conduct. Mm. In 2016, singer Usher, who had previously lived with Diddy when he was a teenager, told radio personality Howard Stern very curious things took place at Diddy's so-called puffy flavor camp. Usher, who was around 13 at the time, had moved to New York City and lived with Diddy, who was going by Puff Daddy, for a year. The idea to live with Diddy came from L.A. Reid, who was Usher's manager. Usher said he went to live with Diddy for a chance to see the lifestyle and reflect referred to the time period as a wild and crazy time in the 90s. And in a 2004 interview with Rolling Stone, Usher was quoted as saying, Puff introduced me to a totally different set of stuff. 
sex specifically. Sex is so hot in the industry. There was always girls around. You'd open a door and see somebody doing it or several people in a room having an orgy. Wow. You never know what's going to happen. Wow. But in 2016, when Stern asked whether Puffy's place was filled with chicks and oraging nonstop, Usher responded, not really. It was curious and he got a chance to see things but didn't know if he could indulge and understand what he was even looking at. Usher said very curious things took place there that he didn't necessarily understand. As for if it would be a place Usher would consider sending his children to, this is what he had to say. 14 years old. Why are you guys? What are your thoughts on this video? I feel so, so sorry for the women who dated Didi because they've been through a lot. Imagine being beaten almost every single time and drugged up and you can't even have your own say because everything about your life is being controlled by him. This is too much. And now I can see the reason why he quickly went and paid up when Cassie sued him. This is also heartbreaking because everything could have gone wrong when he was hitting these women. And who knows how many women have been victims of his beating but are not bold enough to speak up. Let me know what you guys think about this video and let's continue watching you guys. So you're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Meanwhile, a member of a girl group previously founded and managed by Diddy also spoke out after Diddy's homes were raided by federal agents. On Monday, Aubrey O'Day, who was a part of the group Danity Kane, shared a statement about Combs after the raid saying, quote, what you sow, you shall reap. In December 2022, O'Day said she was fired from Danity Kane in 2008 because she wasn't willing to do what was expected of her, not talent-wise, but in other areas. She said she wasn't the only girl that was in those types of positions. This past September, Diddy announced his plans to reassign publishing rights to select Bad Boy Records artists, including O'Day's group Danity Kane. But O'Day claimed Diddy's deal came with strings attached, those strings being non-disclosure agreements, also known as NDAs, that the artist had to sign. O'Day said the NDA agreement included the artist would not disparage Puff, Bad Boy, Janice Combs, Diddy's mother, Justin Combs Music, EMI Publishing, or Sony ever in public. And despite Diddy presenting the music group Danity Kane with their publishing rights, O'Day said that doesn't equal more money for the group, saying the deal would only bring her less than $1,000 in royalties. Another former artist of Diddy also reacted to this week's raid of Diddy's homes. Rapper Mace called the raid big payback and said it was amazing it happened on the anniversary of Life After Death, which was the last album posthumously released by Diddy's best friend, Notorious B.I.G. Mace and Diddy have a long and embattled history. Mace was previously signed to Bad Boy Records in the 90s and the early 2000s. He gave his publishing rights to Diddy for $20,000. When he attempted to get his catalog back years later, he publicly slammed Diddy when the mogul turned down Mace's offer to buy back his publishing for $2 million. Diddy ultimately gave the publishing rights back to Mace. Mace, who had previously worked with Diddy on hits such as Can't Nobody Hold Me Down and Mo Money Mo Problems, before going on to have a successful solo career, said he escaped Diddy. During his podcast, which he hosts with fellow rapper Cameron, he seemingly referred to the serious allegations against Diddy, saying, everything now that we see playing out was all the things I escaped. Meanwhile, rapper 50 Cent taunted Diddy on Instagram after the feds raided his homes. The two have been feuding since the early 2000s. 50 Cent, whose real name is Curtis Jackson, wrote, quote, Now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. The beef between the two seemingly dates back to 2006 when 50 released a diss track called The Bomb, where he claimed Diddy knew who shot and killed Biggie in 97. Since then, the two have made numerous comments on each other. When Cassie sued Diddy in November, 50 Cent said his production company was working on a documentary about the sexual assault allegations against Combs. Even posting a clip to social media featuring bad boy rapper Mark Curry alleging Diddy spiked women's drinks mm. at parties. The Diddy allegations also ventured into the comedy world, where comedian Cat Williams also previously made comments about Diddy's alleged wild parties. And January Williams spoke out about Diddy during Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay podcast. Williams said, I gotta protect my integrity because if P. Diddy be wanting to party, and you gotta tell him no. And just weeks prior to the raid, music producer Rodney Jones Jr., also known as Lil Rod, filed a $30 million lawsuit against Diddy, alleging sexual harassment and threatening him for more than a year. According to the suit, Jones claims he was subjected to possible drugging and rape, ritual humiliation, and being cheated out of more than $50,000 for work on Diddy's album. 
The suit also names actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Jones believes Diddy was grooming him in an attempt to pass him off to Gooding, leaving the two alone in a studio on Diddy's yacht, where Gooding is alleged to have groped and fondled Jones when the two were left alone. Diddy has denied Jones's allegations against him. Diddy's lawyer released a statement calling the allegations outlandish and accused Jones of lying. The statement reads, quote, Lil Rod is nothing more than a liar who filed a $30 million lawsuit shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday. His reckless name dropping about events that are pure fiction and simply did not happen is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. Lil Rod's attorney told Rolling Stone when Diddy's homes were raided, it's about damn time. Sometimes justice delayed is not justice denied so long as justice ultimately arrives. After Monday's raid, Diddy's lawyer issued a statement saying in part, quote, it was a gross overuse of military level force. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained by, but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. There's no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of the allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner. Wow, you guys, that was such an interesting video. I really enjoyed listening to this particular one. And uh, what are your thoughts on Didi? Didi has obviously done a lot, allegedly, and until he's proven in the court of law, he is still innocent. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.